welcome back to the Once Ready Podcast. I am here with the five-star commander of AMC, Miss Ashley. I mean, that's what, you know, the general <laughs> says you are, so that must be true, right? Funny. <laughs> so, military spouse, obviously, all those other things. We're here at ATA. Just wanted to sit down with you for a minute. And um, I did want to start out with Lieutenant Minahan. Do you have any fun stories you can tell us about, you know, way back then? Not sure I can share it. Okay, all right. <laughs> but for you, though, when, when, you know, he first commissioned and you started down this crazy journey of, of you know, the military life, were your expectations met at all? Did, did, could you have imagined, you know, ending up where you've ended up? No. So, I don't even know if he's talked about this. We, every time it was time for him to, you know, every time we had that point where he had to say yes or no to staying in, our one question to each other is, are we still having fun? And that was it. I mean, so, you know, I kind of used like a 75% rule. You know, if it was good 75% of the time and um, and we were still having fun and enjoying, you know, the lifestyle and he was enjoying his work. and So every single time we just kind of like agreed, we're still having fun, so let's do it. And, and here you are, you know, yeah. how many years later, it's, it's crazy, right? Yeah, we still love it, we still have fun and, and it's awesome. So, I mean, a lot more stressful for him than it is for me now. Well, but, he can't go anywhere without people <laughs> mugging him and, and all this other stuff. Everybody moves out of the way. It's, it's got to be a little crazy. Um, I just follow. I'm like, so we have this running joke. We took this, like, one of those, like, Facebook personality tests. And he came out a hummingbird. And I came out a sea turtle. So he just like, you know, he's always moving and flitting around over there. And I'm just floating around, you know. <laughs> right, right. Just coasting down the river of life. That's what I say about myself, right? Like, hey, what happens, happens. It's all good. Yep. <laughs> so when we talk about military spouses, so I'm, I'm married to a military member. And it, it's really weird because I remember when we were at a, a Herbert Field, I was gone a lot. And then we went to San Antonio. My wife left a lot. And the appreciation I gained for what it takes to be the person left behind, you know, it, it exploded. It's crazy. I would much rather be the person leaving now I think than the person left behind. I think every prior member that becomes the stay-at-home spouse says the exact same thing. Right. <laughs> it's, it's just wild. Like, you know, like, I, we used to, you know, I don't want to say that I used to not appreciate it, but like anything else in life, I hadn't experienced it. And like the stresses that, that you have to deal with and all the other things, like I just couldn't have imagined how difficult it was. Like. You know, and, you know, your husband's deployed an awful lot. How did you get through, you know, all those times? Well, let's see. The weird thing is, and we talk about this sometimes, well, for me, um, probably the most stressful time in his career was squadron command because I felt not only did I have a newborn, he took over the squadron when our youngest was four weeks old. So I had three kids and she was born with a heart defect and had to have heart surgery, but we couldn't have the surgery because he wanted, the doctor wanted her to be a little bit older. So we planned it for like the week after he got back from one of the deployments. So, you know, that was really stressful. <laughs> and then my dad passed away. And so it was just kind of like, he took over, I had a baby, he took over the squadron when she was four weeks old. Like a week later, my dad passed away. Oh. And then when he left on that first deployment, that's when I found out she was gonna have to have heart surgery. So how I made it through was my girlfriends. Right. And that, that support system, right? You have to find it because no one can do it alone. I mean, maybe somebody can. I can't do it alone. So the great thing about Abilene, Texas, and anybody that's ever lived there will know this, not a whole lot to do there, which actually was a, a real plus for us because all we really had to do was like associate with each other, you know, and get our kids together to play. And the people with older kids would babysit the older kids would babysit the younger kids. And so we kind of made this decision that 
you know, why our spouses were off defending our country, that we were going to just have fun and enjoy our freedom. Uh, seriously, that's the decision we made. And we made it, like, at the beginning. And it's actually probably my favorite assignment. Right? Yeah. In Appleton, was, Texas? Yes. It's always because surprising. Because we had so much fun. And, I mean, we would send, email them pictures of, like, all of us together and having the best time. <laughs> yeah. So maybe it wasn't that bad. And they're downrange getting pictures from y'all. Like, they just party when we're gone. Like, so it's obviously easy, Well, they're right? sending pictures back, so they were having fun, too. Right. So. So, and as the squadron commander's wife, like, there's a, a fair bit of responsibility that comes along with that as well, right? It is. We had the best for sure. Just amazing. And I just had a really great relationship with him. And he was just so supportive of the families. And... Um, his DO, we were like best friends with he and his wife, and so, you know, there was just a lot of support in the squadron. Anybody needed anything, you know, flat tire, I mean, or, you know, like we had one poor little child get bit by a rattlesnake while the dad was deployed, and oh my I mean, so, you know, you call the shirt, and I mean, like, immediately, things are happening, you know, the brought the dad back because the child had to be hospitalized. And, but I mean, just all these things that were going on and happening. And, um, you know, we had such a close working relationship that it was super fun and we were just all friends. But at the same time, you know, I felt like we were really responsible and trying to take care of everyone too. Right, but it, it is kind of true though. I mean, we joke about it on, on the podcast all the time. As soon as you leave, somebody leaves that's when everything goes wrong you know your refrigerator can run fine for 25 years as soon as someone steps out the door it's gonna die yeah last winter i borrowed a wrench from my neighbor and i got under the sink and pulled out all the pipes and unclogged it and he was at work and it was a snow day and maintenance was only coming out for emergencies so yeah i am like so independent now <laughs> right well and, and that's one of the things we talk about too is as a, a, you know, the spouse of, of one of the people that's gone a lot, especially if you're gone a lot, it's like, I, I couldn't have married someone that needed me there 24-7 because I'm not. I'm not around. And so, like, you, you, you know, we kind of find the, 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 the person that is strong, independent, and can do everything themselves. But I will say, too, you can learn to be strong and independent. You know, it's not something you're born with. So I think... Um, Kind of like in Rocky, you know, oh, yeah. the first Rocky, or actually every Rocky, <laughs> you know, you get knocked down on the mat and what matters in life is if you get up, you know, so if you keep getting up, it just makes you stronger and wiser. And so, and when you have kids, you don't have a choice, <laughs> that you is know, true. Yeah. you just got to keep getting up. Right. So I think it just ends up making you like, I can't imagine Sorry for anyone from my hometown that hears this. I can't imagine spending the last 36 years in my hometown. I mean, you go back and you're like, what are y'all doing? You're doing the same thing you were doing 36 years ago. So, you know, for me, like I said, 75% rule, 75% of the time, it's awesome. 25, not so much, but that's okay. Right. You know, because I can't imagine, I can't imagine any other any other life right I mean it's 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 more than just a lifestyle right it's kind of like a calling and it is a calling for the entire family and if you don't feel that you know I, I, I think those are the people that maybe don't make it or you know they get out and do something else but it's got to be more than just like it is more than fun because you have to totally believe in in the mission that your your family is supporting so I probably feel I think it's been hardest on our children more so than me so, the, like, both our girls went to four high schools. Let's see, uh, our kids went to, not, one went to nine schools, one went to ten schools, and I think one went to eleven schools. Oh, wow. And so, it's been hardest for our children. So, but then I tell people, and a lot of people say this, you know, they didn't really know anything else. So, that's kind of, they just grew up knowing that's how it Right. That's how their life was. So, 
you know, it's, but I think they're stronger for it too. You know, I think you, they maybe had to work through some issues a little bit earlier than maybe other people do. <laughs> but they're all, you know, really successful and, you know, wonderful contributing adults. Right. And so, you know, it's good. I, I, the one thing I do feel bad, I have the same best friend from birth. We've been best friends since birth. And my children will never have that unless it's each other. You know, so I do, coming from a person that grew up in one place, I do feel bad they don't have like those childhood friends really that they've kind of. Right, but I, I think, you know, we all project our own experiences, right? You have that positive thing from like your childhood and you're like, oh, I wish you had this. But maybe, you know, like, but they had totally different experiences that right, you didn't get right. to live oh, through. Yeah, I didn't, like, go to my first foreign country until I was, like, a junior or senior in high school. Right. And, like, yeah. I mean, our son was born in Germany. I mean, they all... They're like, everybody doesn't just travel to Europe and no, the our, Pacific. Our, and... our youngest is mad because she was so much younger than the other two that she missed out on some of the countries that the others... <laughs> yeah, they're just... I'm like, yeah, but you got to go on spring break to Vietnam. Oh my <laughs> yeah, quite the consolation prize. So I, I do have a question. I know my children are so unimpressed with what I do because I'm just their dad. As your children got older, did they kind of look at what y'all went through and, and, and gain an appreciation for, you know, why the things were the way the, the way they were when they were children? Yes. Okay. So there's hope. Someday they might like. There is might hope. Be cool with it. You know they. Uh, I think they, so the youngest is 19, so I think she's still kind of figuring everything out. Our 28-year-old, um, she kind of finds that she's maybe a bit more mature than her peers because she's done so much right. in her life and so many opportunities and so many, lived so many places and, and so, um, yeah, she realizes how lucky she was, and you know, I think she she embraces it now. Right. Well, I, I think you know a lot of us took a long time to like we we for me traveling is perspective, right, and meeting right. other people from other cultures, and so like for your children to experience that at such a young age and gain that perspective so much sooner. Yes. Like you know she's probably way more mature than I am and has better perspective <laughs> than I do. So. And, you know, it, yeah. It is what it is. Um. We get a lot of questions, like from from people that are uh, about to join, you know, from spouses, and like, hey, what can I expect? What do I need to do? So, like, any advice that you can give to someone whose spouse is about to join, or they're about to join themselves, to give to their spouse? So, I would suggest a couple of websites first. Um, Mrs. Brown, and actually, some military spouses approached Mrs. Brown about creating this website that kind of brought all the information together in one place. So it's about, it's covers, and I don't know if I'll get all five of them, but um, child care, education, uh, PCSing, um, schools, and healthcare. Yeah, I got all five. And, uh, and, um, and all the information is in one place, and it's called fiveandthrive.org. And a really cool thing about it is there's like a, this intro and it's like the history of the Air Force and it kind of uh, explains, there's a whole page of acronyms that explains a bunch of acronyms, talks about the Air Force, explains all, tells all the different ranks. It, it just gives you like a, kind of like a 101 at the beginning. And then it talks, then you can go into the different categories and there's um, a lot of information about, you know, um, Funding for child care, um, opportunities for spouse employment, um, you know, PCSing. It, it just has, it brings all the data from all over, you know, the web into one spot. And so that's a really great starting point. And then the other one is Military One Source. Military One Source has just got so much information and offers so much help to anyone. And in active duty children, um, spouses, and they have um, they have non medical counseling 
that can be accessed 24/7, 365 from anywhere in the world. Right. Yeah. So it's and it's got so many. It, they can help you with moves. They can help you with your taxes, with your finances, with adopting children, with finding a special uh, a school for your special needs child when you're PCSing. It's a fantastic. Nice. Well, and I, and I think like the the language thing, like the acronyms and all that. If you can speak the language and put into words like kind of what everybody is saying, it's not so unknown anymore. And it's not so scary. And I think that's a huge hurdle, you know, for people that have only been around civilians their whole you know life. Right. So that's that's fantastic. There's still so many. I don't know what they mean, but uh, oh my. that one page they have, I know most of those. Well, <laughs> and Matchcom to Matchcom, they changed. Like I remember when I switched Matchcoms, and they're using acronyms that I thought I knew what they meant, and they were completely different. And I'm like, I don't know what we're talking about right now because that did, that sentence you just said did not make any sense to me. Yeah. So I don't. Know, I would say for spouses that are just joining. Um, I would try to join any kind of spouses group you can and just go a couple of times and just, you know, I, I think there's all this false information about what it's like that's probably dated by 30 years or 40 years. <laughs> and because some, Hollywood helps out with some of that too. Yeah. And, and it's, I've always, you know, especially in the last probably 20 years, I've found it to be a lot more welcoming and open and friendly. And um, so I would just say, just do it. You know, just try to put yourself out there because what you gain is uh, friends and confidants and people that know what you're going through and can offer you support. And it's as fun as you let it be, right? Oh yeah. I know you talked about fun earlier, and we got to wrap up soon. Um, I know the general keeps around old trucks as like his hobby, his fun thing. What what do you do? What does the five star general commander do for fun? Okay, so not a five star commander. <laughs> um, I have just opened an Etsy shop, so I oh, nice. I do. I have an Etsy shop, and uh, it's awesome. It's super fun. I, I, so I have, actually have a master's in, I have an MBA with um, uh, concentration in the marketing and human resources that I have never used because we moved, well, when we first joined, you know, there were no such thing as virtual jobs. Right. And so, and then I started having babies and then moving all the time. And so I'm finally using my marketing degree, even though it's just for fun. And uh, so it's good. It's, it's all fun. And then, so I also love um, probably the things I'm most proud of that we've done in the last year that, um, you know, I was part of a group of four women that really pushed for it is um, we got Squadron Command course to be certified with, have you heard of Badger? It's a, mil so the Air Force has this badging system. Like a Google cert kind of, okay. but it's the Air Force version and it's called Badger. And so what we did is we created a Badger for Squadron Command course. So spouses could attend without taking vacation days from their jobs. And they can use their continuing, it, it gives them, not only do they get to come and miss work because it's continuing education. So they earn a badge and it's a leadership certification. So they can use that and it counts towards their continuing education hours for their job. And they don't have to use uh, their leave days to take the week off and come. So to me, that was a huge win. Yeah, and that's fun, right? You're helping things and, and making a difference and providing value, right? Yes. So I, I think um, you know that the mark of any great military family or commander or anything is leaving things better than what you found it. And I, after being here just a couple of days, I know that what you know, that's what you and, you know, the other guy have done because <laughs> right? you're the boss and you made it all happen. <laughs> I and, never know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Well, really appreciate you coming on the podcast and, and sharing, you know, your experience with everybody. And uh, hopefully thank people you. get out of it. And we'll, we'll put the websites on there and everything. And awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Have a good one. Thank you.